So when you want something, when you ask for more money, it goes into the vortex and it begins attracting unto itself. And your inner being, your soul, your source focuses on it for you and holds the frequency of it so that you can listen your way back to it so that you can feel your way back to it. So that you can good feeling your way back to it. And once you get on the scent of it, once you get on the vibrational scent of it, once you hear or sense the subtlety of it, and you receive that first thought, that first thought that matters to you, that first thought that's strong enough that you received it and different enough that you know you didn't think it. And that's really what we're wanting to talk with you about is you getting into the receptive mode so you can tell when you're receiving from your source who knows about your vortex or whether you're receiving from someplace else that neither knows or cares about your vortex. So for a while we've been calling this gathering the art of allowing, the art of you figuring out how to allow yourself to be in the vibrational vicinity of the stream of consciousness that's coming from your inner being so that you can hear the subtle at first. It gets louder and more defined and easier for you to hear rampage of information and guidance that is coming forth from your inner being. So you ask for it. Contrast caused you to do that. And Source answered it. But the answer of Source is vibrational and it's subtle and you got to listen. And that's what step three is. You've got to get into the receiving mode, which means, which really means, you've got to turn off the receiving mode of I can't do that or I don't know how to do that, and turn on the receiving mode of this is a simple thing for me to do. You have to turn off the receiving mode of what won't work and turn on the receiving mode of what does work. You have to turn off the pessimistic receiving mode and turn on the optimistic receiving mode. You have to turn off the hate and turn on the love. You have to turn off the confusion and turn on the clarity. It's very different frequencies. Every subject is really two subjects, wanted and absence of it. And sometimes without even knowing it, you're tuned to the receiving mode of the absence of it rather than the presence of it and then you say why is it not coming to me and your inner being is saying not only is it coming it has come and not only is it real but it is so real that we are projecting to you clear thought of your path of least resistance to follow your way right to it and you say oh good maybe oh good then I will just beat a very fast path to the conclusion of this and we say yes we want that for you but we also want for you to understand that the path keeps unfolding that it's like a pipeline that's got all the new stuff getting ready to manifest getting ready to manifest getting ready to manifest oh, manifest yay <laughs> but new stuff new stuff new stuff new stuff new stuff new stuff Okay, new stuff, new stuff, new stuff, new stuff, new stuff. And how does the new stuff get there? By exploring, by having some contrast, by asking for more. It all fits together so perfectly for you. But you gotta stop caring so much about yay. And start being willing to reach for the satisfaction of sensing it, of receiving a new thought about it, of being in the flow of it, which really means you wanna lower your resistance. Because it's the resistance that's slowing everything down and it's the resistance that doesn't feel so good. Now, resistance and contrast, how are they different? They're not so different. Contrast is important for you to know what you do want. You have to know some of what you don't want. Well then, Abraham, then weren't we born into an environment of resistance? Yes. Well then, why are you ragging on us all the time? <laughs> about having so much resistance because you make a career out of it because you stay stuck in step one it's like going to the buffet all of this food lots of variety and you look around don't like that and 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 don't like that oh God, I really don't like that don't like that mm, I think I might like some of that get rid of all the other stuff because I only like that really I only want this I don't want any of those other things on the buffet please remove them they're upsetting me Please remove them. Get rid of all of them. Please get rid of all of them. Get rid of all of them. And the more you say get rid of all of them, they just come out with more plates of them. <laughs> no, 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 no. I said, take them away. Why are you bringing more of them? Take them away. 
As you focus upon what you don't want, more and more and more of it comes because this is a vibrational universe that is based upon the law of attraction. And when you say yes to something, more of what you're saying yes to comes. But when you say no to something, more of what you do not want comes. And then you become a control freak. A failing control freak. Because you can't control it. You just make yourself crazy trying to remove the things that you don't want because you don't want to see them. It might upset you. And we say, then look over there. I can't look over there because I know it's over there. I know it's there. I know it's there. And we say, so that's what introduces resistance into your equation. Step one is know what you don't want. Well, how long do you have to know it? Do you have to know what you don't want your whole life? Do you have to talk about it every day of your life? Your relatives do, we know. <laughs> or can you know what you don't want, which causes you to launch a rocket about what you do want, and then when source gets all over it, and the energy that creates worlds is focused upon it, and the vortex of it begins spinning and attracting the cooperative components, could you look over there? Well, you could, but you say, there's nothing to see. There's nothing to see over there. Look at all this stuff I can see over there. There's all this stuff I can see. I hate most of it. <laughs> but there's all this stuff over here that I can see. And to look over here, I have to focus more than I'm ready to focus. And we say, so when you think about what you do want, when you launch your rocket of desire, this is a powerful vibration that is causing these vibrations and thoughts to turn to things. But every time you say, but where is it? You introduce more inability to see it. Every time you look for it before it's ripe. It's like putting the kernel of corn in the ground. The farmers do it every day. They put the corn in the ground and you put yours there. And then you say, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to see you. I want you to become big and I want you to have lots of ears of corn and I want to eat you or sell you. I want to sell you. You don't just stomp on the ground in anger. All of you don't. You're not discouraged that it hasn't immediately become all that you know. It has a potential of being because you know there's a process. You know that there's a becoming and we want you to accept this magnificent vortex and all that it holds and all that it has already become already. But you've got to tune to the frequency of it so that you, this matters so much, so that you can translate it into something satisfying and something else satisfying and something else satisfying and something else satisfying and something else satisfying. It's like this fetus in the womb. And you are very happy for it to become and become and become and become and become and become. Because you know in time, it's going to come out where you can see it, where you can enjoy it, even in its infancy and being a physical manifestation. You trust that process, you understand that process, and this is the same. Haven't you ever wondered how the becoming of what has become has become? Haven't you ever wondered how that comes about? You see any pipelines trucking things in from other planets? Do you realize what your economy looks like in comparison with a hundred years ago? Because you as humans have been turning thoughts to things. You are magnificent creators, but you suffer unnecessarily because you're holding out for the manifestation and then holding yourself in dissatisfaction through most of the process and therefore slowing the process down and sometimes never realizing it at all. So we want you to feel, hear from us, feel from us the difference between an offering of a thought from source. In other words, let's call it a revelation. A revelation from source. In other words, your inner being knows what's in your vortex and knows where you stand in relationship to it and is revealing to you at all times wonderful ideas and suggestions and impulses that would lead you on your path of least resistance. And the reason that we say least resistance, path, your path of least resistance, is because you've put some resistance on your path and it's all right. Your inner being knows where all of your hang-ups are and knows how to guide you around it. So your inner being is offering you these impulses. The revelation is happening all day, every day. 
But there's something that you've got to do. You've got to do step three. You've got to get in the receiving mode. You have to be receptive. You have to receive the revelation. You have to allow yourself to hear it. So that means you've got to tune your tuner. You can't be focused on what you don't want and tune your tuner to what you do want. You can't be focused upon the absence of something and tune your tuner to the presence of something. you got to tune your tuner to the presence that your source sees. Ooh, have not said that to you that way before. You've got to tune your tuner to what your source sees, you little faker. So how do I tune myself to something that I cannot see? So you got to feel your way there, but you got to understand how it works. you got to understand that you are more than you. You are source energy and you are you. And you can't feel only you. You can't only feel only you because you are more than only you. Haven't said this to you this way before. You can't feel only you. If you could, you would not be miserable when you cut yourself off from who you really are. Look around your world. There are those who have cut themselves off so significantly from who they are that they are obviously miserable. Are you one of those? Because your inner being is aware of you and what you want at all times. It's like having a cheerleader cheering you on even when you're depressed and you say, get away from me. Get away from me. And if your inner being would get away from you, then you wouldn't feel so miserable because your misery is about the vibrational relationship between what your inner being knows about what you want and what you are actively offering vibrationally about what you want. That's your guidance system. So how do you tune your tuner? By caring about how you feel. By trusting that your inner being exists. By knowing that your inner being is real. By tuning to the frequency of your inner being. By carefully and maybe tentatively at first choosing a thought and choosing a thought and choosing a thought and feeling how the thought feels. By showing yourself what your inner being thinks about what you're thinking. Everything is about what you're doing about it. We want you to take ownership of what's coming to you. We want you to accept that it is your point of attraction, but we also want you to know that you have the ability through your focus, through your paying attention to the way you feel as you focus, of molding your thoughts into frequencies that align with who you really are and what you really want so that you can consistently live happily ever after. Now, living happily ever after does not mean contrast free. Living happily ever after does not mean negative emotion free. Living happily ever after means understanding the process. Understanding that when you don't want something, that you do want something and that you have the ability to choose which way you focused and you can do it now or later. You get to choose all of it. And after a little while, instead of seeking a life of perfection where everything's all settled down and just the way you think you want it, instead, you will happily embrace the adventure of life that gives birth to the new desire because you know once a new desire is born that your inner being is in on that that the source energy within you and the point of attraction that your source energy holds is summoning to who you really are and summoning to your new desire all things that are necessary in order to bring it about in full fruition that thought will turn to things Wanted or unwanted, that thought will turn to things. So when you begin to understand that your thoughts are turning to things and you begin to realize that you have lots of control over the thoughts you think, then what begins to happen is you begin to really enjoy anything that causes a new unfamiliar desire to be born within you because now you get the fun, the adventure, the expertise, the hands in the clay of being able to focus in this sort of new arena and then to watch what feels like those who don't understand the laws of the universe. The magic of the universe as the things that you are desiring are coming about right before your eyes. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next